Well, hi there, and welcome once again to In Search of Christianity, brought to you by Bible Talk. And on behalf of Mark and Alice and myself, we want to just greet you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Greetings. Ta-da! And we're glad you can join us as we get back into God's Word. And we're continuing in our study, looking at searching for Christianity in our own lives. Yes. And the evidence of that is the fruit of the Holy Spirit, as Jesus said. Mm -hmm. So we've been, uh, last week we finished up uh, the, the two parts we did on goodness. So we're going to go on to the next one now. But before we do, Mark is going to ask God's blessing upon our time together. Oh, Lord. Please be with us during this Bible study to lead us and guide us to what we ought to say. And once we heard it, or once we hear, hear it, incorporate it into our lives. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name we pray. Hey, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Um, as I said, we finished up with the two parts of goodness in our last couple of, last couple of weeks. And as I have been saying... The fruit of the Holy Spirit is like a chain. It's a link. And each mm -hmm. each fruit, each part of that is linked to the next one. They're all connected. And that's, once again, that's evident because I ended up last week with this verse, all right, talking about Jesus. Remember the, the parable he told of the man who had been encountered, the, his, the servants who had been entrusted mm -hmm. with gifts from the Lord mm -hmm. and how they used him. One did not use it wisely, right? Mm -hmm. But another did. And the master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your master. Matthew 25, 21. Mm -hmm. Good and faithful. So we're going from the goodness to the faith. Faithful. Right? That links us right into where we're talking about. The fruit of the Holy Spirit in the New American Standard is called faithfulness. It's called faith in the King James. Okay. okay. Now, Paul wrote to the Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, and he said, Test yourselves to see if you are in the faith. Mm -hmm. Examine yourselves. Or do you not recognize this about yourselves, that Jesus Christ is in you, unless indeed you fail the test? Mm -hmm. It's about faith and faithfulness. You know, Martin Luther wrote back in the, in the late 1400s when he was doing his commentary on Paul's letter to the Romans. He said that faith is not what some people think it is. Mm. He's right. Mm. <laughs> so I want to ask you, and I guess I'm asking you, what is faith? Faith is hearing. No, faith comes by hearing, well, faith but faith is not hearing. Right. No, faith is trusting in God, trusting in Jesus. Yeah. I thought. Well, if you said, quoted from the word of God, yes. from Hebrews chapter 11 in the first God. verse, you would hear this. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Okay? Hebrews 11, 1. What's faithfulness? That's the definition of faith, faith. faith from the word again. Carrying out yeah, something, you putting speak, that, putting that in practice. When you say well, something and you do it. Let me give you my definition of faithfulness. And by the way, this is a valid, valid definition. Faithfulness is keeping a covenant, right. a solemn oath. The word. Faithfulness is doing what you've said you were going to do. Faithfulness is keeping any solemn oath. All right. Yes. Okay, so that's the knowing of what they are, faith and faithfulness. And you can see there's a little bit of difference here. I want to talk about that, right? Mm -hmm. But then the question becomes, if you know what it is, do you understand what it is? Because knowing doesn't always mean that you understand, okay? Mm -hmm. um, you can know or assume that you know that when you put your key in the ignition in the car and turn it, the engine's going to start up and you're going to drive away. You don't have to understand the workings of an internal combustion engine to make that happen. Right? right? <clears throat> so there's a difference between knowing and understanding. Now, understanding, you don't always have to understand. Now, I use that example. If you throw the light switch 
and the lights come on. You may not understand the entire process that starts somewhere in a, in a plant that generates the power that comes to there and all the workings. You don't have to understand you don't have to. for it to right. work. And right. But when it comes to the Word of God, mm -hmm. a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, our God who breathes life into those words desires that we both know and understand. Okay. And he provides. Yes, he does. It says in Proverbs 2, 6, For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. Mm -hmm. All right? So he wants us to understand the process. You know, my experience in, uh, in, in traveling a good portion of the world, preaching and teaching for many years, would seem to indicate, unfortunately, while many know what faith is, few apparently understand. Now, I, I'm saying that because that's, that's what I have seen in, in all of that. Mm -hmm. Solomon, with all of his God-gifted wisdom, wrote these things. And I'm going to read from the, from the book of Proverbs. But I'm just going to go through real fast. So, he said that we are to acquire understanding. Mm -hmm. We, as Proverbs 4 5, to get understanding, to call understanding your intimate friend, because fools die for a lack of understanding, while understanding provides favor. So much that understanding is to be chosen above silver, mm -hmm. for understanding is a fountain of life. That's all from the book of Proverbs. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, yes, obviously. God wants us to understand, not just know. Mm -hmm. You need to know. You need to know what faith is, right? right, right. So, so we know what faith is. The Lord clearly defined it, as I read in Hebrews 11.1. 1. But now let's examine ourselves, us the redeemed, to make sure that we have understanding. Mm -hmm. Let me start by saying this. So we're going to talk about faith. <laughs> the opposite of faith is fear. Yes. Now, a lot of people really don't understand that, but that's the truth. And they both come by hearing. Mm -hmm. One by the word and one by the world. Yes. Okay? But you are either operating in faith or, or in you're fear. operating in fear. Those are the only two alternatives. Mm -hmm. We live in a binary world. It's either on or off. It's either, you know, it's either light or... This is the truth, okay? Faith will cause you to do things. Fear will cause Absolutely. You. They're both motivators. They both drive. They're part of the engine that drives us. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, David, now David was a man after God's own heart. Yes. That's what but he wrote in Psalm 55, and he said, Because of the voice of the enemy, fear and trembling come upon me, and horror has overwhelmed me. That's verse 3 and verse 5 from Psalm 55. Mm -hmm. So here's... Here's a man truly of faith, okay? Look what he did. And, yeah. yeah, look at the things he did. I mean, you know, imagine going out and facing Goliath on the mm. battle. And yet, when he listened to the voice of the enemy, when he paid attention, this is why Jesus said, be careful what you listen to. When he listened to the voice of the enemy, he became full of fear. I'm going to tell you something. What most of the, First John 5.19 says that this present world, this world system, it's in the power of the evil one. Right. If you are listening to the world and not filtering it through the word, it's going to cause you to tremble in Absolutely. fear. Yeah. Because we live in we live in a world that becomes increasingly unfriendly to our lives, yes. all right? Yes. Okay. But so the opposite of faith is fear, but the opposite of faithfulness is adultery. Okay. Yes, right. yeah, that makes sense. The breaking of a covenant. Mm -hmm. Now, remember, this is what, what God said about Israel, mm -hmm. that they had committed adultery, all right, yes. because they broke faith with him, all right? The breaking of a covenant. Mm -hmm. So God said that he saw the adulteries of faithless Israel when the people refused to obey his voice. Mm -hmm. Yet, he said that if they would repent and return, and this is Jeremiah 3.15. <coughs> he said, Then I will give you shepherds after my own heart who will feed you on knowledge and understanding. Back to that same place. Okay? 
knowledge and understanding. So <clears throat> let me put two hypothetical questions here on the table, okay? <laughs> the first question I'm going to ask you, and this is, as I said, it's hypothetical. Mm -hmm. Did the Apostle Matthew have faith? Yes. Well, I'd say that's evident. Yeah. <laughs> that's evident. Was his wife faithful? <laughs> well, I would say... Well, the, the thing is, I'm, I'm gonna, I am going to say that she probably, I mean, she most assuredly was, was, all right? Yes. Yeah. But the point is, there's a difference in your understanding of what I just said. Mm -hmm. When I ask you, was Matthew faithful? Did Matthew have faith? Yes. You're thinking about, do you know, the things that he did. That, when I say, that was his wife faithful? All of a sudden, you're not thinking of those spiritual things. The question is, did she keep the covenant that she had with, with him? Yeah. Okay. So you see the difference between faith and faithfulness? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Faithfulness is about keeping that covenant, right. keeping that bond, doing what you said you're going to do, right? But it says that anything done without faith is, is sin. sin. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that's why we, we need to be walking in faith. And by the way, as you all know, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you're not paying attention, if you're not listening to the word of God, you're not going to have faith to walk in. You know, there's there's one thing that you have to say about faith, because I see T-shirts with faith on them. You have to have faith in something else. You can't have faith in faith. You have to have faith in that somebody will will do what he said he'll do. Well, that's kind of faithfulness. Uh, but, oh, yeah. but you have to have a reliance in something or somebody. I can trust. Trust. You have to trust. I I have faith in my car because it'll start. I have faith that maybe, you will show up on maybe, time. Maybe it will. And maybe, maybe it won't. won't. <laughs> but it has a track record of being faithful. I know, but it's that, not totally yeah, but see, reliable. This is, that's a good point, but that's, yeah. that's exactly the point. This is why, you know, it's it says in Jeremiah, fail. go to Jeremiah 17. It says, cursed is a man who trusts in mankind and makes mm -hmm. mankind his trust. Right. How blessed is a man who trusts in the Lord and, and you know, makes the Lord his trust. Right. Because the things of the world will fail. Are going to fail you. Will fail. Mm. So you don't have any reason. I said, you know, you walk over and you throw the light switch and you expect it to go on without understanding. It probably will. But there's no guarantee. Absolutely no. There's no guarantee. I mean, I am old enough. I've, I've lived to, through two massive, massive power failures. Mm -hmm. In 1965, I think it was the first one when the entire northeastern yes. part of the United States blacked out. That's okay. Yeah. All of a sudden, there was no electricity. In New York City, we were in New York City when there was another massive black blackout. I don't know it was in the kind of second half of the 70s. I, I don't really remember. I'm but I'm sure you turn on a light and the bulb goes. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So you have to be careful what you place your faith in. Right. Okay. Uh, that's that's we're going to we're going to go there. But you made you made a good point. I want to get to it. But you see, to the world and in the church's common understanding, those two faith and faithfulness mm -hmm. generally don't connect. Mm -hmm. They're different things. All right? right. It's like two different subjects, but in fact, they are exactly the same. And I'm going to show you that. Okay. That's why in the King James, it can say this fruit is faith, while in the New American Standard, it calls it faithfulness. Right, right. They're in complete agreement when one calls a fruit, the fruit of the Spirit, remember, mm -hmm. faith, mm -hmm. and the other faithfulness. Mm -hmm. We know what faith is. Here's the understanding. Faith is... Well, now, Make a note of this. Okay. Okay. Faith is the absolute trust, a reasonable trust, mm -hmm. in God's yes. faithfulness. Yes. Amen. Okay, you get that? Absolutely. I mean, this is so, no, he's never, so never important. Yeah. Faith is the absolute trust in God's Faith. faithfulness. And that's exactly the same as what it says in Hebrews Chapter 11, verse sure, 1, right? It is a real question at hand as we look at ourselves 
and seek the evidence of a redeemed life, Christ in us. Mm -hmm. The real question is is this. Am I faithful to God? Mm. No, no, no. The real question is, do I have faith? Do I believe that God is faithful to me? Mm. Absolutely. If you don't understand that, you're never going to walk in the power of faith that God has given us each a measure of, okay? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He does not just tell the truth. He is the truth. It is written, let God be found true, though every man be found a liar. Romans 3, 4. Mm-hmm. God can't lie. That's what it says. Yeah. And back from the beginning, I mean, in the time of Joshua, Joshua wrote, you know, not one of the good promises which the Lord has made to the house of Israel fail. All came to pass. Right. Now, just a little in Hebrew, that word for promise is debar. Mm. Okay? And then in First Kings chapter 8, verse 56, I'm going to read. It says, Blessed be the Lord, who has given rest to his people Israel according to all that he promised. Not one word has failed of all his good promise, which he has promised through Moses his servant. Not one word, the Hebrew word for word, is debar. Mm-hmm. And there, of his good promise, the Hebrew word is debar. Because in Hebrew, God's chosen language Speak title, it. Yeah. a word spoken is a promise. Right. It is a covenant. Right. This is why God watches over his word to right. perform it. He can't do otherwise. And because when, when God, and when Jesus speaks, once he speaks it, it's already done. Because... A word spoken is a solemn oath. And this is one of the reasons that I have said for years and years and years, for decades now, that if we wanted, we, us Christians, wanted to really see the world look at us differently. And it says in Ephesians 5 that we are to be imitators of God, right? Right. As beloved children. Here's how we would begin to imitate him. He watches over his word to perform it, is what he said to Jeremiah. If we would watch over our word to perform it, if you say it, do it. Yes, that is so important. Because the world does not. There's always kind of an excuse somewhere along the line. Always excuses. Okay? Like I said, to the Lord, a word, any word spoken is an oath. Any word spoken is a solemn oath. And I was just thinking, if in your heart you you speak something and you really want to carry it through, and there are circumstances that come come up, and but God can change those circumstances and make that word happen. Yes, but this is also why you know we need to be slow to speak. Yes, we need yeah. to be quick to listen. You know, don't don't be Absolutely. rash in what you yeah. speak. Okay, put a guard over your mouth. Or ask God to put a guard over your mouth so that you don't say things. Right. Because you want to be liked, so you, you constantly say things. Yes. Yeah. Every word you speak in the eyes of God is a solemn oath. If you don't keep that oath, you are not faithful. Mm. Okay? A lack of faith in the Lord's faithfulness is not only a sin, whatever is not of faith is sin, right? But it is the highest insult that one can attempt to heap upon him. Are you, Jesus said, I am the truth. You want to call him a liar? Because if you say something and don't do it, you lied, all right? Listen to what he said to the prophet Ezekiel, okay? And I'm going to read from Ezekiel chapter 6, verse 9. Then those of you who escape will remember me among the nations to which they have be carried captive. How I have been hurt by their adulterous... This is God speaking. Mm. How I have been hurt by their adulterous hearts, which turned away from me, and by their eyes, which played the har- harlot after their idols. God is hurt by our adulterous hearts when we, when we don't trust in his faithfulness. Okay? <clears throat> Does a man's lack of trust in God pain him? Sure. It said in Luke 19.41, when he approached Jerusalem, he saw the city and wept over it. 
Do you care how Jesus feels? Mm. Okay. I, I'm going to I'm going to share a little testimony. <clears throat> Years ago, um, Alice and I we were blessed, and it was a miracle that, that God had provided a place for us to live, as it always is. But we, we lived in a condominium in, in Orlando that belonged to a brother up in upstate New York, like 1,300 miles away. And um, it, was, it was just an absolute God-given opportunity because I, I was watching over a couple of other condos that he owned in this big building, and he gave us a discounted rate on a, an apartment. It was really a blessing. Mm -hmm. But we, quote-unquote, live by faith. If you're not living by faith, you're sinning. But that's another story. That's, I'm not even sure where that expression comes from. I want to live by faith. Mm -hmm. we all, we're all supposed to live by faith. Mm -hmm. The point is, we didn't have any assets. We didn't have any income at the time. I mean, it was just, you know, we had, I think, I don't think we had even started on social no, security. Yeah. yeah. But somehow God always supplied. I mean, there was, something would come up. I'd go, somebody would ask me to come preach someplace. And, well, we never asked for anything. Mm -hmm. the, the money would come in. But it just so happened this one month. And now this is after probably around 2008 or nine, somewhere in there where the financial crisis had started and the housing market was absolutely collapsing, and particularly in Orlando, which had had such a bustling. So he was really in, as so many people were, in trouble with his property there. And it just so happened this one month, it was coming to the end of the month, and we didn't have any money. Well, we always had to pray it in. We always had to pray it in. But the, for, for whatever reason, I was really burdened. Right. Yes. And I was burdened because I knew the shape and the condition that this brother was in because of the whole housing market. Yes. And I kept saying, oh, I'm, I'm saying to myself and I guess saying to the Lord, you know, if I don't have the money, what's going to happen to that brother? And the thing is, I didn't have any concern for either myself or for Alice because we have a history. God has always taken care of us. Right. So I wasn't concerned about us regardless of what happened. But I really had a burden for this brother. And I kept saying to the Lord now, I'm saying, I'm praying for him. I'm saying, Lord, what happens if I don't have the rent to give him? What's going to happen to him? And I was going on and on and on. I mean, I was just, because it really troubled me. And I kept saying this to the Lord until I heard a voice. Whether it was that still small voice that speaks to my heart. And I heard the voice of the Lord say to me, why are you planning on me to fail? Well, I didn't boom. see it now. Yeah, boom. It was it was like a smack. I'm telling you, it was like it was like a shock to my heart mm. because I hadn't perceived it that way. Mm. But that's exactly what it was. Mm. You know, housing is a need. It says if you have food and covering with these, you shall be content. And he said, if you you know that Paul wrote and inspired by the Holy Spirit and said, my God shall supply all of your needs through His riches and glory in Christ Jesus. God was saying, why were you planning on me to fail? And I, it, it stuck me that that's exactly what I was doing. Yes. And it hurt my heart. It pained me. Now, it just so happened that at the time, I was doing a weekly uh, internet television show with a brother, uh, now going to be with Lord Lucky Him. Hallelujah. Not Lucky. Well, bless yes. him. Yeah. <laughs> to live as Christ, to die as gain. He was, right. But anyhow, every week we would do a two hour, every week on Wednesday, we would do a two-hour live video broadcast on the Internet. And I went there, and I shared this, and I repented. I mean, I repented of my failure to trust in God's faithfulness. Yes. You can call it my lack of faith, because that's exactly the same thing. And when I did, when I repented, it was like this, this whole burden just lifted from me. Mm -hmm. Well, I still didn't have the money for the rent. But I had no. I had absolutely no concern at that point, either for myself or for this brother. Right. So at the end of the broadcast, Alice and I had our little fellowship with this with this dear brother, and we got in our car, and I turned the car on, and we started to pull out of the dry out of the uh, parking lot at this church, and as I did, my phone rang, my cell phone rang, and we're in Winter, this was in Winter Park, Florida, Central Florida, and the call was from a woman in Washington, the state of Washington, yeah. in the Pacific Northwest, about as far as you can possibly get 
from each other and still be in the United States. Yes. And she said to me, I see that you own this domain name, which is not being used. It was because we had been earlier yeah. adopters and I had it. And I said, yeah. And she said, would you be interested in selling it? And I said, well, I might be, you know, would you like to make me an offer for it? And when she offered me exactly the amount <laughs> that we needed for the rent, I knew something was afoot. <laughs> God is faithful. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Whatever you do in your life, come to that place where through the, the, the work of the Holy Spirit in you and your trust, that you come to know that with an utter, absolute, and total assurance. God does indeed watch over his word to perform it. Oh, yes, God is. is faithful. Yes, when you believe that, you are walking in faith. Amen. Hallelujah. And walking in faith will change your life if you're not, right? Absolutely. So the Apostle Paul brings it forth best as the evidence of a redeemed life. In Romans 8, 31 and 32, he says, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him over for us all, how will he not also with him freely give us all things? Why don't we trust in God? He gave his beloved son, Jesus Christ, in the, on the cross yes. for us. What, what, what do you more, withhold? What more? Mm. The word confidence comes here. I got my little benefit from my four years of Latin in school. Right? The word confidence comes from the Latin con, which means with. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fidere, which means faith. Confidence means yes. with faith. Mm -hmm. Do you have confidence in God? Mm -hmm. That means with faith. Yes. Because you, you can trust in him. Not one good promise he has promised has failed to come to pass. He loved you enough to give his son Jesus Christ. What's he going to withhold? Of all the things you need. Okay. And he tells us not to trust in mankind because absolutely. mankind, they, mankind will fail no matter what you do or say. Absolutely. But be prayerful that your belief, your faith comes from what you have heard from God. Oh, amen. Faith yes. comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. All right. The word confidence comes from that line. That means to be walking with faith. Mm -hmm. The people of the world lack confidence. Yes. And well, they should. Yeah. They certainly should. They're not confident of their homes. Mm -hmm. They're not confident of their jobs. They're not confident of their political leaders. They're not confident of peace in the world. They're not confident about the economy. They're not confident about their health. Not even of their spouses. Right. Right. All with good reason. Mm -hmm. Start believing in God and praying for all those things. Hear from God, and you will begin to walk in confidence. And that's where go back. We can walk back up the chain. That's a good thing. Yeah. It's a good thing. It'll give you peace, Amen. and that peace will give you a joy. That's right. And that will all come from love, love. knowing God's love for you. Hallelujah. Okay. Amen. We've already looked at all of this, Amen. but we're not quite finished with this. But we're finished with our time. So, Father, we just thank you, Lord God. We thank you for your faithfulness, Lord yes. God. Help us, Lord, that our lives will be a living testimony that we trust in your word because we trust in your love. Hallelujah. We praise you and thank you, Father, in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen, amen and amen. amen. God bless you. I will play.